All right. <laughs> uh, sorry to just be, uh, you know, starting the video right in the middle of things, but I was uh, thinking I was going to find some more blue spotted salamanders. I'm out here again. It's May 12th. Same spot where I found the blue spotted salamanders, and I was coming out here still looking for the red back salamander. And I found one. And it doesn't have a red back. <laughs> you see, the red back salamander has two different phases. There's red back, and then there's what they call lead back. And I imagine lead back meaning the color of it, because it's a bit of a gray color. But this is indeed a red back salamander. And he or she is really tiny. Right in here. Let's give a look. Plethodon cenarius in all his or her glory. This one looks pretty young. Approximately two and a half inches. I know, right? Blue spots. Looks similar to the blue spotted salamander in that. But the limbs are quite different. Number of coastal grooves on this guy is definitely much more. I don't want to handle them too much. I don't want them to get too many ions from me absorbed through the skin. But on the blue spotted salamander, there's only like 14, 12 to 14 coastal grooves. But in this guy, you can see he's got much more. These guys can have 17 to 22 coastal grooves. Look at how many are there. Plenty. And the limbs are much smaller, too. Definitely a red back salamander without the red back. Oh, so adorable, too. Look at those tiny legs. Legs are much smaller than the blue spotted salamander. And he's a lot more active than they were. Cute little guy. Adorable. Adorable. Eastern red back salamanders are lungless. They don't breathe in air, but instead, air dissolves into the moisture on their skin and oxygen is absorbed into the skin. So they need to stay moist to breathe. And this is also why I didn't want to handle him for too long. Their skin can absorb acids and oils from our hands that can be harmful. To stay moist, they usually remain underground in the heat of summer, but can be found on the surface in early spring or after summer rains, especially at night. While they're elusive, and from my experience not easily found, they do have a huge role in their ecosystems, both in just how much invertebrate life they consume and keep in check, and as a large food source for many other woodland animals. A study of a New Hampshire forest found that the number of salamanders, most of which were redback salamanders, outnumbered the amount of both birds and mammals combined in that region. And the study admits, too, that because of how many salamanders are underground, that their estimation as to how many were out there was probably low. Now, as always, you want to put them back in the same location that you find them and always you always want to put them back in the same area that you find them you always want to leave nature either as nice or better than you found it and so i've had this one out from undercover for a good three minutes now don't want them to dry out so let's get them back underneath the moist log oh that feels good <laughs> been looking for the red back salamander for a long, long time. So, yeah, I'm going to keep on looking. And if I find more, you can probably check that little bar at the bottom of the video. And if it's much longer, then I did find more. And if not, then this is probably the end of the video. But thanks for coming on this herp quest with me. Success, red back salamander. Though I gotta admit, I kind of feel like I need to like fulfill the promise and find a red backed red back salamander before I really get to check this one off my list. <laughs> but still, successful day. All right, thanks for herping with me. I'll catch you next time.